Hi guys, welcome to episode 2, part 2 of Restoration for Beginners, Datsun 280Z project. In this episode, we're going to show you how you can upgrade or restore the front disc brakes on your S30 Datsun. This part 2 of the episode will serve as a disassembly guide, where we'll show you all the details of taking the old parts off the car and cleaning them, prepping them as needed. Check out the video description section to navigate to the part that interests you. If you haven't already, please check out episode 2 part 1 if you're wondering what parts I'm using, the cost estimates, or if you just want a quick one-on-one -on -one of the key components of the braking system. If you're looking to see how all the new shiny parts are put together, skip ahead to part 3 the next episode. I have a 280Z here as my project car, but this should be relevant for the earlier 240Zs, 260Zs, and the later 280Z X Datsuns as well. Well, we have the car up on jack stands and the wheels are off, so let's prep for disassembly of the braking components. What I mean by that is using this product called Liquid Wrench. Generally, it's called a penetrant. This will allow you to remove old, <laughs> old bolts and nuts by dissolving some of the rust and crud that might be making them stuck. This is generally recommended because if you don't use this and you try to force the bolts off with something like an impact wrench, uh, you run the risk of breaking the bolts off or ruining the threads. So this is a good idea if you know that the bolts haven't been removed in a while and you think they might be rusted. But first, uh, what we're actually going to do is turn this wheel assembly so that you have easier access to the bolts that are behind the caliper. An easier way to do this would be to just turn the steering wheel, but I'm just going to muscle it right now. So that's the wheel turned all the way, and immediately you see these four bolts right here. These bolts actually hold a caliper together, and they're not really meant to be removed. In fact, if I were looking to keep these calipers, I wouldn't really want to loosen them. Um, I tried to actually take the entire caliper assembly off in one piece, but since we have new calipers, and loosening the bolts might help us remove the brake pads that are probably st stuck on, uh, we'll also spray down, uh, spray these down with liquid wrench. Now the bolts that we're actually interested in are these two uh, larger bolts. So these two bolts actually hold up the caliper to the wheel assembly, so these bolts are the ones that we'll uh, really need to remove. What we're going to do now is take this liquid wrench and spray it on all the bolts. This is best done full day before you plan to take the bolts off so that the liquid has plenty of time to work on the rust. I'm also going to spray this to all of the hardware that is keeping the brake pads in because they're also probably uh, rusted and stuck. Now I'm just spraying this fairly liberally all over. Um, since we really have all new parts that are going on and I'm not too worried about this contaminating the surface of the rotors or the brake pads. We're going to put on a little bit more and there we go. We're going to let this soak for a bit. So by now hopefully the liquid wrench that we put on all the caliper um, hardware have done its job and um, these should be um, hopefully easy to take out. So the first thing that we're going to do is take out these little retaining pins or retaining clips. See one right there and then you see another one right there. Set these aside. Next is uh, taking out these pins. Now this one you can manhandle a little bit because um, as you know, we already have all new hardware for this caliper. So, just take a pair of pliers. And what just came flying out was the, the brake pad uh, retainer clip. It sits right there. So we're going to take this one out. Then here's a pin that just came out. And here's the other brake pad clip. So the last thing is this last one, which comes out really easily. So set all these aside, and then now you are going to try to take off the brake pads. 
So these are not coming out um, on their own. Let me give it a, a strong pull. Nope, they definitely are not gonna come out without us loosening the calipers a little bit. So what we're gonna actually have to do is loosen these four caliper bolts that hold this thing together so that we have a little bit of extra room to pull these pads out. But before you do that, um, there's one thing that you should do. As soon as you loosen all four of these bolts, what's gonna happen is brake fluid is gonna come running out. Um, and that's something that you want to avoid as much as possible. So what we're gonna do is take this vice grip and then actually clamp it um, on this rubber brake hose here so that um, you limit the brake fluid um, that comes running out. It's gonna happen anyway because there's brake fluid already in this caliper, but clamping this is a good idea to limit um, the amount of brake fluid that's gonna come rushing out. But it's, uh, you don't wanna damage your uh, rubber brake hose uh, with this vice grip. So what I'm gonna do is take this uh, paper towel uh, fold it up like so and put it around here and vice grip it. That's a little too tight. Now that you've closed off the brake hose, uh, we can go ahead and remove these four bolts. What you're gonna need is a uh, 14 millimeter socket. Um, I'm gonna use my impact wrench to just loosen uh, these four bolts so we have easy access to the brake pads. Um, yesterday, I actually sprayed these on with a liquid wrench, uh, penetrating oil, so hopefully uh, we should have a fairly easy time getting these out. So that now that we've used the impact wrench, you can already see the brake fluid that's starting to leak out like so. And now we can easily, or that one still wants to put up a fight, but this one at least, you can pull out. That's a brake pad. And this one, is also sliding out. There you go, that's how you remove the brake pads. So we're now going to try to remove this caliper off of the wheel assembly. So uh, what we're gonna do now is actually disconnect this brake line uh, from the caliper so that we have an easier time removing this. Um, you can see that I vice gripped off the rubber brake hose up here so that um, we don't lose any more brake fluid and introduce air bubbles into the system. Uh, well, any more than we have to. So we're gonna take this flare nut wrench, uh, 10 millimeter, to loosen this. I really suggest using a flare nut wrench to do this instead of a regular wrench because it is very easy to strip these bolts. Um, and. Once you do that, it's going to be a huge pain in the neck to get these off, and you might actually need to get a new brake line. So now that the brake line is out, we are going to remove these two large bolts right here so that we can take the entire caliper assembly off of the wheel hub. You can use a breaker bar to do this, or um, if you're lazy like me, you can also use an impact wrench. 
I'm actually using an impact driver, but it should be more than strong enough to handle this job. This goes without saying, but make sure you're using a socket that is impact rated. So now that these bolts are loose, take them completely and take out the bolts. You can see that this one is really pretty rusty, so we're going to actually have to dip this in de-rusting solution. And this one as well, this one is less rusty. And then now you can actually take the entire caliper off, right here, you can set it aside. And that is how you take off the calipers. Now it's time to remove the wheel hub because in order to remove the old rotors from the car, the entire wheel hub needs to be removed. The rotor is being held in place um, by four bolts that are inaccessible unless you remove the entire wheel hub. In this video, we're just going to fast forward through the process uh, because there is another more comprehensive video on how you can not only remove the wheel hub but also replace the bearings and the races that are inside and how to repack it with fresh grease. So if you're um, wondering about the details of this portion, uh, check out episode 3 of this series. One thing I will say is that this part is very messy and greasy, so make sure you're wearing gloves and you have plenty of um, used microfiber towels or um, other terry towels so you can always clean your hands in between steps. Now we're going to remove the brake dust cover just because it's so dirty and caked on with old brake dust that um, I think I just want to give it a quick clean. So these are the four screws that hold it in place and it's just easy as uh, drilling them out. Take care not to strip these screws. Even the screws have a lot of brake dust on them. And with all four of those screws off, you can now remove the dust cover. You can see all the brake dust that's caked on there. Now we're going to try to take the rotors off, off of the, the wheel hub. Now you can see that we're working on cardboard and I have two sets of wooden blocks here because we're going to do a little bit of pounding and we definitely don't want to be doing that on the bare concrete. So this process is going to be fairly simple. You need a um, socket and an impact driver or an impact wrench if you have one. Um, otherwise, a breaker bar would also work. So you're just going to remove the, um, the four bolts that are holding the rotor in place to the wheel hub. And if you've applied some liquid wrench ahead of time, these should be coming right out. Now put all your hardware in a Ziploc bag so you don't lose them. And we'll also be doing some cleaning on these rotor bolts as well because the new rotors didn't come with new hardware so we'll have to reuse these. Here's all the hardware in a Ziploc bag. And now the, the rotors are seized onto the wheel hub pretty good so we're gonna take, um, we're gonna have to do some pounding. I'm using this uh, old brake pad to, um, so that I don't, I don't have to hammer away at the wheel hub directly. So I'm just going to set it right here and get to hammering. And the wheel hub just uh, fell right out. 
and that's how you uh, remove the old rotors. Now we're gonna do some cleaning. So you see all the hardware that we pulled off the car? Some of these parts are really rusty, like this caliper bolt that we just took off, and some of the, the brake pad um, hardware. So we have this Rust-Oleum rust dissolver. I have all the um, hardware in a container. I'm gonna pour this rust dissolver and submerge all the parts and wait for about 30 minutes for it to do its job. Now what we're going to do is degrease and de-rust the, the rotor bolts because we will have to reuse these. So again, we have them all in the Ziploc bag. We're going to uh, spray a lot of degreaser in here and generally just agitate the bag so that it works faster. Now we're going to uh, dump the degreased bolts and washers into the Rust-Oleum de-rusting solution. I found the rusty bolts um, fizzing in the solution pretty satisfying to watch. Now let's move on to cleaning the steering knuckle. What we're going to use is just a general degreaser and spray it on there really liberally because um, if your car is anything like mine it'll have around 40 years of accumulated brake dust and grease um, all over the steering knuckle and while we're in here this is something that we definitely want to clean. Use a toothbrush if you're um, impatient like me and you want to speed up the process but generally if you spray on the degreaser you can just kind of leave it to do its job and come back later and uh, spray it again. I'm just using water here so I can uh, wash away all the dirty fluid and see if I'm getting down to the bare metal. doing a little bit more cleaning now I'm just using compressed air to speed up the, the drying process and to prevent uh, flash rusting now the last step in the cleaning is using a paintbrush and the rust-oleum rust dissolver to prevent any more rust from forming on the steering knuckle that we cleaned uh, down to the bare metal Now for the final step before we put everything back together with new parts is doing a little bit more dirty work um, which is um, degreasing and de-rusting this old uh, wheel hub here. So I'm just really really liberally using the, de um, the degreaser and a metal brush to try to get to all the brake dust has, that has accumulated on this thing for um, the last 40 years. Now that all the old parts are off the car and have been cleaned, let's move on to episode 2 part 3 where we'll walk through how to put everything back together.